If you're shopping for a new Mac and are considering upgrading the storage from the base models, you've probably seen those eye-watering prices. And you may not actually be able to afford the model that you want because it doesn't have enough storage. Luckily, there are options. And this is a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure that I just happened to come across. And I don't even think I was aware that you could get an empty Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. So this is pretty cool. So in this enclosure, you can add your own storage, whatever size that you want, and save a ton of money in the process compared to upgrading the storage inside the Mac. And what you need to put inside here is an M.2 NVMe SSD, which yes, that is a lot of letters, but essentially it looks like a little RAM stick and it just slots right inside. And this is a PCIe based SSD stick. It's got a couple of chips on here. This is a four terabyte version. They come in different sizes from different brands. And this just happens to be the one that I'm using today. So let's see what we got inside this box. It's like we have a little instruction book, which we're not gonna need. We have a Thunderbolt 3 cable that this comes with. We have these little sticky pads, which are thermal pads that you can actually place on top of the SSD to keep the heat down. And we have the enclosure itself. And this enclosure is actually pretty small. I mean, look compared to the MacBook. And very first impression of this enclosure is that it looks pretty good. Like it looks nice and slick. Now it's got a little bit of heft to it. It's not heavy, but it definitely feels solid because of this aluminum case right here. We have a Thunderbolt connection. And on the bottom, we have this little thumb guy to turn and open up. And that is where we will insert the NVMe SSD. Looks like down at the bottom, we have this little retaining ring to hold the drive in place. So we're just going to line up the keys right here at a 45 degree angle and insert them and push it down. Oops, push it down. And then we can move that ring to keep it in place. And there we go. So the drive is now installed inside the enclosure. So we can just reconnect the bottom piece, super simple, lock it in place, and we are good to go. Now I wanna look at the pricing just real quick. So if you're picking up an M2 based MacBook Air, it comes with a base 256 gigabytes of storage. And if you wanna upgrade that to say one terabyte, it's gonna cost you 400 extra dollars. And that's not, you get the one terabyte plus the 256, it is just the one terabyte drive. If you want two terabytes, it's going to cost you 800. And if we jump over to a MacBook Pro, which comes with 512 gigabytes standard, one terabyte is going to cost you 200, $600 for two terabytes, 1200 for four terabytes, and 24 eye-watering, gushing dollars for eight terabytes of storage. And that is so much money compared to something like this. This enclosure itself, which is Thunderbolt 3, costs $110. And then you can choose whatever size or brand SSD you want to go inside. So if we stick with the Sabre brand like I'm actually using right now, you can get a one terabyte for $79, you can get a two terabyte for $130, you can get four terabytes for 350 and up to eight terabytes for a thousand. So even looking at the eight terabyte option, a thousand dollars plus $110 is way less than $2,400 that Apple charges. So next we're going to test out the speed of the Thunderbolt enclosure and the SSD inside. But first I want to thank today's sponsor, Soundcore. Everywhere you go, there's noises and conversations all around you. And sometimes you just want to turn it all down. Luckily, the new Soundcore Space One headphones are here to help. These noise canceling headphones have so many features packed inside you'll be surprised that they're only $99. The noise cancellation in the Space Ones is up to two times stronger than the previous version. That means if you're sitting on an airplane, you can kick back and ignore the loud hum of the jet engines or even the baby crying just a few seats away. If you move around or the noises around you change or when a tight seal isn't created around your ears, the Space Ones will adapt and adjust the noise canceling profile. There's also a transparency mode that can be used to listen to the outside world and have a conversation without taking the headphones off, which can be tailored to your personal preferences using the Soundcore app. And if you do need to take off the Space Ones, they will detect that you removed them with the sensor in the ear cup and pause your music for you automatically. They will also automatically resume playing when you place them back on your head. And listen, if headphones aren't comfortable, none of the features matter. The headphones themselves are a clean, modern design with just the right amount of padding for the headpiece and the ear cups. The head cups also feature an eight degree floating access design. They move eight degrees in both directions to conform to your head, which makes them extremely comfortable to wear for long periods, like a full workday at the office. There's so much more to the Soundcore Space Ones, like up to 55 hours of battery or 40 with ANC on, LDAC audio support for higher quality listening, and HearID, which uses the Soundcore app to tailor the audio to your own personal sound profile. So if you work in a noisy environment or take public transportation or just wanna turn down the noise of conversations at home, the new Soundcore Space Ones will give you everything you want for just $99. And you can pick up a pair of the new Space Ones using the link and code in the description below. And my thanks to Anchor and Soundcore for sponsoring this video.
So the drive is connected and mounted and now we can actually select it and we're going to use Blackmagic disk speed test today just to get a general idea of the speed of the SSD inside this enclosure. So we'll go and select the target drive and that's going to be this Rocket Q SSD. Click open and then we'll start the test and see what kind of speeds we get. So right now we are actually getting about 1300 megabytes per second write and about 1500 megabytes per second read. That's pretty good speeds. It's not the best speeds I've ever seen. I'm kind of surprised, but these are a little bit lower than the maximum that I have seen using Thunderbolt drives in the past, which can get up to about 2,800 megabytes per second, depending on the computer and the drive. So these speeds probably aren't going to blow you away, it seems, because using this drive itself, I've seen much higher speeds. It seems that the enclosure is limiting us to about 1,600 megabytes per second or so. Is it the fastest disk I've ever seen? No but it is fast enough for just about anything, including multiple streams of 4K video editing or other high disk IO intensive applications. They should probably work just fine with those speeds. Now, just for comparison, inside this 14 inch MacBook Pro, which has the two terabyte SSD inside, I can get about 6,400 megabytes per second write and about 5,300 megabytes per second read, which is of course way faster than this external enclosure. But if we look at something like the base model M2 MacBook Air, we're gonna get somewhere between 14 and 1600 megabytes per second for both write and read speeds, which is about in line with this external enclosure. Now, like I said, I have been able to get faster speeds from this SSD inside here than I'm getting from this enclosure itself. So it looks like there's a limitation from this, at least version of this Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. There are plenty of other options for enclosures that you can get as simple as USB 3 enclosures, which of course are going to be limited to maybe around a thousand megabytes per second maximum, or you can get something kind of in between like a USB 4 enclosure. And that's what I have used before. This right here is the Acasis USB 4 enclosure. And just like with the Thunderbolt enclosure, it uses the same style of SSD inside. But this, because it's USB 4, is backwards compatible with other versions of USB. So if you don't have a computer that has Thunderbolt, you can still use this enclosure and always upgrade to a Thunderbolt capable computer in the future and keep the same enclosure. Just like with the Thunderbolt enclosure, you can easily pop this open and install the SSD inside. And it's essentially the same. Now this enclosure is just slightly larger than the Thunderbolt 3 enclosure from Sabrent, but they both look pretty good. They're both built solid. They're both all aluminum. So let's go ahead and pop the drive back in here and see what kind of speeds we get. So doing the same test with this Acasis enclosure, I'm getting about 2100 megabytes per second write and about 2600 megabytes per second read, which is quite a bit faster than what we were seeing with the Sabrent Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. So as it turns out, the Acasis enclosure is actually faster and more compatible with USB 4 than the Sabrent Thunderbolt 3 SSD is. However, this case over here, this enclosure is a little bit more expensive. It's about $30 more at $140 versus $110. So both of these are basically DIY drives, right? Because you buy the disc and you buy the enclosure and you kind of make what you want. There are other options as well. So there are tons of options actually available if you're looking for an external SSD. These two right here are also good options. This right here is a Samsung T7 SSD and it actually comes in a newer form factor if that's something that you're looking to pick up. But this will actually get you between 800 and 700 megabytes per second in read and write speeds which again is still plenty fast for just about anything you would need to do. Then there's something like this OWC Envoy Pro FX, which is a Thunderbolt 3 compatible drive, also backwards compatible with USB. Now, just so you can see everything clearly, here's a table that shows everything spec to two terabytes and it shows the read speeds compared to the price. So if we look at the far right, you'll see that the MacBook Pro is the fastest drive available with up to 5,300 megabytes per second for the two terabytes and the MacBook Air is the most expensive option at $800. The Acasis USB 4 enclosure and the OWC Thunderbolt drive has a read speed of about 2,600 megabytes per second. And you can see that the prices are very similar. And the Sabrent Thunderbolt SSD enclosure gets about 1,400 megabytes per second at 240. And the cheapest option is the Samsung T7 at $100, which gets up to 700 megabytes per second. So there are a ton of options to expand your storage that don't include buying from Apple. Now, there is just one reason that you might wanna get internal storage inside your Mac from Apple, and that is just convenience. I actually decided to buy this MacBook with two terabytes of internal storage, which gives me plenty of room to work with my regular Final Cut Pro video files, and then when I'm done, I just kinda of offload them to my NAS. Yes, I could connect and disconnect a drive or leave a drive connected as much as possible, 
And I did that for a couple of years. I work on a couple of different Final Cut Pro projects at a time, which takes up a decent amount of space, but I don't go above two terabytes. And when I'm done with a project, I move it off to the NAS. That does save me the inconvenience of connecting and disconnecting a drive every time I take my computer out to the couch or to downstairs or wherever else I want to work from. I did for years use external drives and they work fantastic and I still use them for different needs. However, I don't use them for my regular daily work anymore. But if none of that matters to you or you have a desktop Mac, then an external drive is definitely the way to go to save a ton of money and get all of the drive space that you need. So anyway, that's about it for this video. What seems to be like the best option for you? Do you want the convenience of the built-in storage despite the price? Or would you prefer to save a ton of cash and get something external? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to know how I feel about this 14-inch MacBook Pro, it's perfect. Check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.